hey, congratulations on a third season for the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, when, when you started this project, uh, you know, a couple years ago, did you think that this show was going to be this popular? I hoped. I hoped that it would. I hoped that it would resonate with it. And obviously with the cast that we had, like, it's one of those things, like, as an actor, you face so much rejection, and there's so often many times where you hear, like, no, and I already had, like, a show that I really loved get canceled, so I try not to get my hopes up too much, but, like, as we're doing it, as we're filming the episodes, like, you hope that it will be, so I'm glad that, I'm glad that those expectations were met uh, tenfold. So, so what do you think is the success, what made it successful in, in your eyes, this show? I think the thing that, that made it like really connect and like resonate with the audience is that we, it feels like real people. It feels like people you know, it feels like people in your neighborhood. It feels like people that you see like on your block, on the corner, going for a jog. Um, it being a multi-cam, like obviously it has that texture of nostalgia. Multi-cam shows, uh, they feel like really homey. It's something that the entire family can enjoy. But I think besides the show just being like really, really, really funny um, and having like a very talented cast, I think it just, it just feels like home. It feels like people you know. It feels like your neighbors. Absolutely, because, uh, because I've, I've, I've seen you on your previous show and I've seen you on this show and I think you're a hey. hilarious person. So, <laughs> Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Now, um, I've, I visited the set when, um, during the first season and I, and I thought I recalled that I thought it was filmed in front of a, like a live studio audience. Am I, am I wrong? Yeah. No, it's, it's filmed live. So I, I know in the first season, we got a lot of comments on Twitter. People were like, oh, the laugh track is killing it. I was like, it's not a track. That's the real people. Like there are, there are microphones so we can pick up the laughs, but that's a real audience, like a big audience. And I think the challenge of this season has been doing it without that, that, that feeling, that texture of like, we're live, it's buzzing. There are people laughing, reacting to every little thing, like every look say it gives, usually we get like a huge laugh. Um, but now we have like, I think maybe 10 people. They're like, they work as actors, like they're, they're extras, but they're, they're just hired to sort of laugh. Um, and then sometimes it can get a little quiet in there. And so it's one of those moments where we'll be like, I think we're funny, is it working? Is it funny? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that's, that's been the challenge of season three, but we have a live audience every episode, usually. Are, are you the type of actor that basically rides on the energy of the audience or was it hard to adjust for you? Um, not, not as much for me, not as much for me. Like, I feel like, um, the entire show like needs that extra texture, but I think, for me, I, I, I really get engaged and connected when I'm making the other people on set laugh. Like I get, um, I get a, a, a real rise out of trying to get to Sheena or Seth or Max, especially Max to break because Max is trying to get everybody on set to break laughing. I don't know how many takes we've had to redo because Max has come in and done something or said something that nobody was ready for and it breaks us up. So I think that keeps everybody sort of engaged. Now, I, I, I never watched you guys actually did a, did a production. Is there a lot of improv going on? Because everyone is very funny on, on this production. Mm -hmm. Every, everybody is really funny. Um, we rehearse a show over a span of a week. And so there are like three or four days where the script can be really fluid and like flexible, where sometimes people ad lib or improv something in there. Um, but by the time we get to the tape day, usually the lines are set. And, and we have to sort of stick to the script. The only people I think that have a little bit of flexibility on that end are Cedric and Max right now. <laughs> now I mean, obviously they're the vets, they're tried and true, so the, the, the writers trust them. I'll get my chance. Well, uh, we, we know you, got, you, you, you have uh, some good, good highlights uh, this season because uh, what, one of the things that uh, they make fun of your character being, uh, what, a, a Trekkie and... Uh, and the yeah. showcase yeah. An, an apartment for you. <laughs> yes, yes. Marty is a, a classic blurred. He loves Star Trek, um, which is so funny because I, I'm a little bit of a, a blurred myself. So I think as they've been sort of weaving these elements into the character Marty, every time the writers would be like, oh yeah, Marty is a Star Trek. And I was like, I love Star Trek. 
they'll be like, oh yeah, Marty plays Dungeons and Dragons. I'm like, I play Dungeons and Dragons. So, like, it's like one of those situations to where like these these little elements that are highlighted between uh, Marty and I just sort of connect us even more. No wait, so so you 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 totally cl- connect with your uh, your character then on on this show. Yeah, yeah. I feel like me and Marty could be like really good friends. I feel like. If I like, I'm a little bit cooler than they write Marty. I'm a, I'm a little bit. I got a little more swag than uh, than Marty typically enters into the room with. But me and Marty are, we could be really good friends. Well, I I, I don't know because be, be behind you, you have this katana on 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 display. So I'm telling so- you, <laughs> this is in home defense. This is home defense. <laughs> That is excellent. Um, for for this season, the third season actually started off uh, um, with a little uh, BLM and um, and politics. Yeah. Could you could you talk a little bit about that? Because that's that's usually a serious note, and mm-hmm. especially for a year like twenty twenty. Yeah, I I've, the thing that I've said a lot is that I feel like our show has always been. Uh, very conscious of of Black Lives Matter and and has sort of weaved that into every episode. Like Black lives have to matter in the show because these characters are Black people. They navigate the world as Black people. They share a lived Black experience. Um, So in this particular episode, we did sort of highlight that instead of having it just be like present in the background. Um, And I feel like our show is one of the shows that is, is uniquely gifted at doing that. By nature of what the cast is and like the premise of the show, people having these very different perspectives and experiences and backgrounds, sort of using their differences to, to bridge that gap and bring them closer together. Um, there aren't many shows that can do it as well as our show. Like we have, um, we have the actors that are, are able to sort of switch really, really easily from a really heightened like comedic show to to get really grounded and talk about something um that has like a, a a real heavy impact on our community and on this country uh and it was it was an honestly it's weird to say it was a fun episode to shoot it was one of those episodes that you're really proud that that you did it i felt like a i felt like a a, a real artist that day and i felt like i could add that uh, to 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 the consciousness of this country and just give everybody an opportunity to not only laugh but to, to think about what that means for them. Well, was it difficult to basically turn on that uh, that dramatic switch because because you know you you you've been in comedy for so so long. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I have been in comedy and that's usually the work that I get. Um, that's the auditions that I go out for. That's like that's that's a, a clear strength that I have as an actor, but. I'm classically trained, man. I know how to do it all. And I was I was grateful to get the opportunity to even tiptoe into it a little bit. And seeing Cedric and and Sheon, who plays Malcolm, have that father-son scene, everybody, like it stopped everything on set. It literally stopped everything. Um, when we were at the table read, when they shot it, it was it was a beautiful scene to watch and to get Cedric into a little more of a, a dramatic um area in the scene was was really really beautiful to see his artistry sort of grow and expand in that way are we going to see more of these type of themes as we go through the season or or is this is a pretty pretty much at, a, at the beginning of the season three you know what's so interesting our show has always done that from like season one to season two like we've always done that a little bit but i think because black lives matter was such like a, a hot button everybody sort of like paid attention to it but our show has always had that balance. Our show's always been capable of of having like a really, really ridiculously funny moment, like Cedric and Max trying to kidnap somebody's rooster, to having like these really, really heavy talks with, with Cedric and Shion or Shion and Max. And like these these moments where the show is able to ground itself a little bit and give the audience something to think about and talk about. Well, obviously, you know, the, the show the show is about differences uh, amongst racial lines, which which is great because that that's what uh, that's what actually unites us through you know through, through yeah. the humor of our differences. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> now, one of the things that I'm, I always find it interesting is because uh, is it, are they going to introduce like a real strong romantic uh, link for your character? Hopefully, I hope so. I hope so. I, I really hope Marty gets a little love. Um, they teased it a little bit in season two where uh, he, he was sort of um, falling for his next door neighbor. 
uh, her name was Kiara. So they, they had like little elements of that uh, in the show. But I guess it's one of those situations to where in, in shows like this, when it can go for who knows how long, they don't want to jump too quickly into, into Marty being like head over heels, heels in love with somebody. Um, they want to make sure that they have the right actress, the right, the right time and setting for, for that to happen. But I want Marty to find somebody. He got to find somebody. He's like, that's the missing piece for him. Sorry, that was my phone. Oh, that's that's all right. That's all right. So um, for, for, for yourself, uh, Marcel, how did you got started in this business? Because we, because I know your first major project was was with the mayor. Yeah. Um, so I've been I've been acting sort of not casually, but like just doing like small things, church plays and, and school things like that since I was little. Um, but it wasn't until I got into high school where I started to like think like, oh, maybe this is something that I can do. And then when I got to college, I went to Prairie View A&M University, which is an HBCU uh, near Houston, Texas. And I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm, this, I'm gonna dedicate all of my time, all of my, like, my training, anything that I have, I'm gonna give it to this thing uh, because I feel like this is my calling. I feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. And so since that moment, I've just been going super, super hard, just trying to be the, the best artist that I can be, trying to be the best storyteller that I can be. Um, and so I was in New York, doing like basement theater after grad school. Like uh, when you go to grad school, you're like, this is gonna work. I'm gonna get this training. It's gonna be great. I am classically trained. People will see that and they're gonna give me jobs because I'm amazing. And that's not how it happens. Um, it's it's kind of one of those situations where we're like, great, you graduated, who cares? Um, so I was doing a lot of like, like basement theater. Then I was getting like regional theater work that was like really, really, um, needed it was like a confidence boost it gave me that professional training and then i i finally booked the mayor and that was that was sort of like my my taste of tv i was able to do that with my friends so that was a situation where i, I felt so comfortable it was like the best environment and um i think i, I think i want to add i mean i always want to do theater i always want to be versatile in that way but I, I i definitely have sort of fallen in love with with television and film Wow, it, it it sounded like you 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 really got used to it. is is te is television going to be your anchor or are you going to hopefully someday go into more film? I want to I want to do it all. Like I feel like certain stories lend themselves to certain mediums, and so like I want to write. I want to uh, hopefully direct. I want to do like films if I get the opportunity to do it's, it's kind of hard to do it with the way that the neighborhood shoots like the schedule that we shoot on is yeah. tricky to fit a, a film into um and because i'm not cedric or max or somebody like that they films don't usually shift their schedule for 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 me yet um but i wanted i want to do like movies i want to do broadway like i like there are so many so many ways that you can tell a story and so many ways that you can connect with an audience and i don't want to cut myself off from from any of those things absolutely and um, because because you work with uh, Cedric and Max, is are there do they give you like a very good like you know important advice or you learn something um, great about them with, with these industry veterans? They give they give the best advice. They give the best advice. Like honestly, I I definitely consider Cedric to be um, like a mentor and a friend. He's somebody that like first of all in in general, Cedric looks after everyone on in the cast everyone on the crew like he's a good steward of our set he's a good leader of our set uh so he makes sure everybody's okay but there are so many opportunities where said will like pull you to the side and he'll be like that was good you did this maybe like flip this joke or you have great timing on this set. and so it's one of those things that like it, it's like really affirming and it just gives you an opportunity to to grow and expand excellent well let, let me start wrapping things up because i because i know I know you you're so busy with the neighborhood, but you know we're living in crazy times right now, and especially crazy you, times. <laughs> as you see, I have a katana back here. Yeah, and especially you there in uh, in Southern California. How are you staying sane and creative during these crazy times? It's 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 a mixture of things. So one, I'm a big advocate of therapy. I think everybody should like see a therapist. I know it's really difficult. Like it's something that everyone can't always afford. I wish it was more affordable for people. But if you can and you have an opportunity, or if it's in your your like network to get that service, definitely talk to somebody. Um, but I think the the thing that helps me be creative is is just sort of being open to 
all kinds of different possibilities. Like TikTok is really cool and it's really fun. I just got a TikTok. Uh, the, all, all the apps, you know, I'm, I've been finding, um, uh, finding my groove in some of these things. I am uh, an amateur iPhone photographer. I've been really, really sort of getting my compositions tight in, in the iPhone camera. Uh, but like, I just, I just, I'm open to finding different ways to be creative. And I think a lot of times uh, I, I'm lucky because I'm blessed with a lot of creative friends. So like they'll find ways to keep you engaged and like give us something to do in like in, in these like weird coronavirus times. Absolutely. And, and before I let you go, just for shits and giggles, what's Let's your favorite what, what's your favorite Dungeon and Dragons? Wait, we can cuss? This whole time I didn't know we could cuss. Yeah, we could cuss. <laughs> oh well shit then. <laughs> I have been, I've been like CBS mode. I've been very like, whatever. I didn't know we could cuss. I didn't know we could say words. There, there's no censorship on, uh, on Zoom. I didn't know. <laughs> what were you saying? I was just saying that for shits and giggles, what is your favorite Dungeons and Dragons class that you love to play? Ooh. Um, I, well, I, so my character's a halfling. Okay. My character's a halfling, only because I thought that was like really interesting. And when I first started playing, that's that was the 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 that that was the the character that I chose. And he's a he's a chaotic, good, okay, halfling. Just a little, just a little like on the on the on the edge of uh, of crazy, just a little bit, but in a in a really in a really really positive way. Um, that's that's kind of where I live on that end. <laughs> is what is he a rogue? He's or a, a no. He's um. Oh snap! What is he? Uh, what do you call the? Is he a thief? No, maybe it is a rogue. A rogue, right? A thief, right? Yeah, he's a rogue. He's a halfling rogue. <laughs> for for some unknown reason, I could totally picture that. Well, anyways, hey Marcel. Uh, thank you uh, for, for speaking with us. It is a delightful show. I'm going to fo fo follow you for sure to see where, where they're going to take, take your uh, journey next. Thank you so much.